Hi, I'm Matt McClung. I'm the percussion director at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi, and I'm the principal timpanist and percussionist of the River Oaks Chamber Orchestra. And it's that job that concerns our discussion. I'm talking to Paul Lansky, who has written a brand new percussion concerto for me and the River Oaks Chamber Orchestra, which we are about to perform in two hours. And we're Better gonna... late than never. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, uh, I think we should get into it and talk a little bit about the piece. Um, can we start by talking about the title, Five Views okay. of... Uh, so the full title is Five Views of an Unfamiliar Tune. Yeah. Well, the story of... This is sort of an interesting story. When I wrote Threads, which is a percussion quartet, I started out by doing a series of studies for so percussion. I did a sort of drum study, I did a noise study, I did a vibraphone study, and um, then I went together to put them into a piece. And the reason it's called threads is because you get um, a vibraphone piece, a sort of noise piece, and a drum piece. A vibraphone piece, a noise piece, and a drum piece. A vibraphone piece, a noise piece, and a drum piece. So it goes lyrical, noisy, um, loud. And then it occurred to me that this is sort of like a Bach cantata. <laughs> you get um, arias, recitatives, and choruses. Right. And so that was sort of the analog. And I was actually going to call Threads a cantata for percussion, but Adam convinced me not to. <laughs> so anyway, when I got to the last movement, there were three sets of three movements, and there's a tenth movement, I decided to write a chorale prelude. And... Um, I made up this chorale tune, which um, really worked very well. And I, you know, it, it's sort of a hard chorale tune to sing. Right. It's da da di da 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 di da da la di da da di da 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 da. Anyway, it's not you know something the congregation would sing easily, but it sounds like a chorale tune. Yeah. So I, I had so much fun with that, and I was so, sort of so interested in it that I, I wrote a piece for the Relash Ensemble, in which I did a whole movement based on that chorale tune. And I used the chorale tune in several other pieces. And then finally, I decided it, it came time to exercise this from my work. I'd done too much. I did a cantata where it ended with it. And I decided that... Oh, an, uh, an actual cantata? Yeah, for chorus. Well, no soloists, but chorus... Uh, 13 Instruments. Um, it was written for Western Michigan University. It's called Contemplating Weather. It's about different views of weather. Um, and then when uh, I got the commission from Rocco, um, I decided, let me put this to bed. <laughs> so so I, uh, I decided to do a bunch of movements on this. And I like the idea of doing something very lyrical for percussion. So um, that's, that's where it, the idea came from. And there are five views. The first, the first view is sort of just a statement of the tune. The second movement, uh, Through the Shadows, is the tune with sort of dovetailing string parts and sort of overlapping things. The third movement is loud, bombastic, noisy movement. The fourth movement is meditative and contemplative, and it uses bone. And the fifth movement sort of wraps it up. Um, I, the piece is kind of backwards in the sense of a cantata because, you know, you normally expect to end with it, end with the chorale, but I decided to start with the chorale. Right. So that's the idea. It's... Um, um, I, I didn't want to write, I mean, there are some great pieces for percussion and orchestra, I, but I didn't want to write a piece that was all sort of pyrotechnics. So I wanted to write a piece which was sort of lyrical and rhythmic and emotional. And that's basically where it is. So um, I think I think the, the, the five movements work well together. And I think um, the thing that I'm... I'm noticing is that it doesn't feel like 18 minutes. No. The piece is 18 minutes long. It flies by. Yeah, I, I 
I checked my watch and it says really 18 minutes and that's a good sign. Yeah. So. That's great. Um, when you and I first started talking about the piece after you had been contacted by uh, the orchestra, I think one of the first things we talked about was instrumentation and you were kind enough to ask me what I was comfortable with, what I wanted and I was trying to ride that line between you know, I wanted your vision to be pure and I just wanted to be the instrument of your vision and I didn't, I didn't want to monkey with it too much. But I also wanted to be honest and, you know, not tell you um, that I could do everything when in fact I can't and I have areas of specialty. But I wonder how much you took that in um, and how much you just kind of had uh, ideas ahead of time about what the instrumentation was. Well, I think I, I remember I asked you if you were comfortable with mallets, and um, um, I, I like to write for mallets. I've written a lot of marimba music, uh, and I, I really like what m mallet players do. But I like mallets plus instruments, so the way I think of the piece, except for the third movement, which has no mallets in it, uh, the way I think of the piece is sort of mallets plus so vibraphone, um, marimba, and you got the orchestral musician playing Glock. Yeah. Um, and that works well, I think. So uh, I, I've written, um, I have one piece, it's basically the first mallet piece I wrote, which is Three Moves for Marimba, mm -hmm. which people struggle to play. <laughs> It's it's a very hard piece. Yeah, I had a student work on uh, uh, hop. Okay, that's that's where it came from. Yeah. The last section in hop is Nancy Zeltzman asked me to write a whole piece based on the last section of hop. Um, so, but I I didn't want to write. You know, I find that I've written several pieces with mallets plus instruments, and uh, four mallets sort of going all the time with instruments playing is a little too dense. So I, I, most of the piece, except for the last movement, is a single line mallet stuff. And I think that works better with instruments than um, sort of multi marimba, right. a multi mallet piece, big chords and that sort of thing. Well, it was interesting because the it says in the score, you leave it a little bit up to the performer um, you specify two metals and two woods, basically. A low metal sound, a high metal sound, a low wood, and a high wood. And we went back and forth when I was trying to figure out what those sounds were going to be. And one of my stipulations was uh, I had to play them while playing the marimba. I had to play them while playing the drums, and I had to play them while playing the vibraphone so rather than having all those three instruments circled around my woods and metals we were going to we were going to have three different sets of uh instruments which i think you called toys which was just kind of a blanket term for okay these are the I toys i thought that was a technical metals. term <laughs> it may be it's you know it's something that gets tossed around but it was interesting to me because uh someone else who was involved in these discussions was our executive director of this orchestra, Alicia Lawyer, who I think made the initial contact with you. Right. And so somewhere she read an email that said toys in it. And pretty recently she wanted to get an idea of what the instrumentation was and she thought maybe we could put a little video presentation together to promote the concert. And she said, yeah, can you maybe just demonstrate the toys and what you're gonna be doing? And I think she thought toys. You actually had toys. I, I didn't press her on what she was expecting, but I sent her a video of like pipes and wood blocks. And she was like, the, those, those are the toys. And it wasn't until then that I thought, oh, a normal person would hear toys and think that I was playing yeah. like a Cabbage Patch and a Rubik's Cube or something. So. Well, people have done that sort of thing. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, per the thing I love about percussionists is you, you'll bang on anything and make <laughs> interesting noises. Yeah. We're not proud. Um, yeah, that's a whole other piece if you want to write a piece for actual toys. I think yeah, yeah, no. Um, okay, so we, uh, 
we balanced it out, I think, nicely between, um, you know, some of the, the mallet sounds, the tuneful sounds, and then the, uh, the percussive sounds. And we did go back and forth a little bit. I sent you video clips. Right. It's really nice in this oh, modern it's, age. It's, it's, that, a new, it's a new age. You know, we're on different coasts, and I can, yeah. I can just make a video, a one-minute video on my phone and say, how are these? And I remember you... Um, I, I knew what it was like when you were happy because you were happy when I sent you the drums and the cowbells and the wood blocks. I had a sense that those were the right sounds for the sort of rocking third movement called On Parade that was just going to be a rack with cowbells and kind of um, synthetic jam blocks. And to me, that was the most obvious. Um, you know, I was like, I, I think I know exactly what he wants. And when you got that video, you were like, yes, that's exactly what I thought. Um, and yeah, and the first sounds I had weren't really very well pitched. They I were sort of splashy. And now I use Ongwalken. yeah. And those two... Those are wonderful. They, they just... And I just picked a tritone. Yeah, I figured that's great. It, they will always conflict and not conflict with... And it's nice the way they're is. not in tune with the marimba. Right. Sort of vibes. Yeah. No, they, they work out. And then the same with... Um, so my, my toys for the marimba setup are uh, a log drum, the two pitches of a log drum, and then two Almglocken, fairly yeah. deep Almglocken. Um, my toys for the vibraphone are two small wood blocks and two uh, pipes. And for me, that was a little bit of a challenge because you can't always find the perfect mallet for both those things. The perfect mallet for a wood block is not necessarily the perfect mallet for a pipe and um, you know you use them especially in the vibraphone section they're they're all of a piece you use sort of a flowing line that moves among all those four toys and uh, you know like the pipes ring forever and the wood blocks don't and the wood blocks have mm -hmm. a big chirping sort of front end of the sound and the pipes don't so I you know I went through I I stuck stuff to the wood blocks to kind of dampen their initial attack. And then I like stuffed uh, foam rubber inside the pipes so that they wouldn't ring forever to try and get that sound um, to, to match across the four sounds a little bit. Can we talk a little bit more about the genesis of the piece? Cause I know how it was from my point of view, but I mean, was it as simple as someone calling you and say, do you want to write a percussion concerto for this ensemble? And you said, yes, was there any did you ask any questions? Were there, I mean, I'm not asking about the contract or anything, but I'm, I'm curious. I was just surprised. I, you know, somebody mentioned your name and I said, yeah, that would be great if we can get him. That was kind of my thought was, um, I, I was just surprised and delighted that you were willing to take on this project. I didn't know how much history you had with orchestral music. I didn't know if you'd ever written a concerto before, and I didn't know if it was something you were interested in. Um, you know, I can tell the story of the email chain from my point of view, but from your point of view, did this fall in your lap or what? Um, yeah. It, it, um, I had, writing for orchestra is, is a big deal, and I, when I, did, when I st made the switch to instrumental music, I never thought I would write orchestra music. And actually, the first orchestra piece I wrote was a concerto for two pianos and orchestra for the Alabama Symphony, and that led to a residency with the orchestra. Uh, and writing writing orchestral music is really hard. It's 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 a big deal. Um, and I I did I did the concerto for two pianos. I did a guitar concerto. I did a sort of orchestral piece. I did a string orchestra piece. And uh, I, I have a couple of other things, but um, the idea of writing for chamber orchestra and percussion especially appealed to me. I thought it was a really nice way to, to get into uh, writing for orchestra without having to write for, you know, massive orchestra. Yeah. And uh, so I was, I was sort of really interested in that. And, um, I had just finished the piece for two percussion and two pianos, which um, I, I was really happy with. I thought uh, I thought it was I thought it worked, and uh, the idea. And I, I'd heard of you, and um, people, you know, 
said, oh, Matt McClung, I just mentioned your name. And they said, oh, yeah, he's good. So that's sort of how it happened. Well, I'm, I was very glad that it worked out. I, this is my third um, concerto with the orchestra. And um, I'm, this orchestra, we're in our 13th season. We do uh, four full orchestra programs per year and then lots of solo and chamber things around Houston. And I'm, I'm the only principal percussionist. I mean, I've been here since the beginning. And very early on, Alicia Lawyer asked me if I wanted to do a concerto. I said, oh, this would be great. I don't, it's not really something I do very often and it sounded exciting. And we went through this long process of listening at, you know, back then it was CDs, right? So she would listen to CDs and I would, we would, I, I, I remember specifically like dropping off CDs in her mailbox and taking out CDs that she had left for me in her mailbox. And we would just do these swaps and I would listen to different composers and give her um, thoughts about, you know, what I wanted to do and different pieces that I'd heard and different composers I was interested in. And this was maybe the second season of the orchestra. And I remember giving her somebody's piece. It might have been uh, Roshan's uh, percussion concerto. Um, I could be wrong about that. But I, I gave her some piece and I said, what do you think about this? This is interesting to me. And she said, I love the piece. I'm not sure if our audience is ready for it. And that's always a concern when you're talking about orchestras, the, you know, the audience, there are certain preconceived notions about uh, audiences for uh, orchestral music. And, you know, I, that stuck in my head and she wasn't being closed minded at all. She was just, you know, trying to figure out what was going to work in, in that particular situation. So we went with uh, the Havana's piece, uh, Fantasy on Japanese Woodprints, which was, you know, a, a wonderful concerto and it was a great experience. But fast forward to when she again came to me and said, uh, a year ago or something, I think it's time you did another concerto, you know, would you like to commission a piece? And I said, that's great. I'm really excited about that. That sounds like a great idea. And we started talking about composers and I still had that thought in my head of, okay, we, we have to choose something that's interesting, but that's going to work for our audience. And it was she, in, in my memory, maybe she remembers this differently, but, um, I believe she brought up your name. She said, what about Paul Lansky? And I didn't, you know, I didn't know how many people who weren't percussionists knew who Paul Lansky was because, you know, everybody knows three moves from Marimba and everybody knows who sub percussion is. And, you know, Threads is in the Pantheon as one of these wonderful early pieces that so commissioned along with, you know, pieces from David Lang. And um, so I was surprised that she said that because I thought, you know, is, is he too weird for like, you know, is he too new music-y for our, uh, I would have suggested you myself, except I would have thought she would have said, you know, I love his music, but is my audience ready for it? So from my point of view, I was, you know, as soon as she said, what about Paul Lansky? I was like, this conversation is done. Let's get Paul Lansky. Like if you're, if you're satisfied with Paul Lansky and if you think um, the audience will react to it, um, I'm, okay, well, I'm done. I, have an, I have an admission to make. Okay. And that is that when I decided to write the piece, I didn't give a thought to catering to the audience. To the audience. Yeah. I, um, this piece comes from my inner musical being. It's not, it's not designed for, you know, um, an unsophisticated audience. I, actually, I think I think there's a certain amount of sophistication in the piece because it doesn't follow uh, sort of normal movement sequence, and um, uh, I'm I'm really pleased that there was some concern about the audience uh, and and my music um, because I I like to think that uh, my music is accessible and. Uh, Threads is, is a real trip for me. I just, I, every period, periodically I dial into YouTube and, and there, there must be a dozen or two dozen groups who have done YouTube videos of Threads. Yeah, and, and that's not a simple undertaking. That's no, a, you've that's got a, a tough piece. You've got to cut pipes. Like 30 minutes 30 long. minutes, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, and the chorale tune is on pipes, right? That's right. It's on cut pipes that are yeah, tuned to yeah. this. And I, I put instructions in the score of how to cut the pipes. And you have to go to a hardware store. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, so so um, I'm pleased that, that there was some concern about um, who, uh, who might do something that's appropriate for our audience. But that wasn't how I thought about it. I, I just decided to write. I, I do write pieces that are more complicated. I have a piece called Textures for two pianos and two percussions, mm -hmm. which is, is funkier than Five Views. But uh, I, I just thought that was sort of, you know, what those instruments can do. A chamber orchestra, I played with chamber orchestras when I was a kid. I was a horn player. And I played with a wonderful chamber orchestra in Greenwich Village where we did lots of Haydn symphonies. And I just loved working with chamber orchestras. And the op opportunity to do something for chamber orchestra and percussion just was just such a wonderful opportunity that I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I'm so glad it worked out. I was, you know, I know I've told you this, but I was super happy when, um, when you know, I was reluctant to tell people because I was like, I'm not sure I fully believe that this is happening. <laughs> like I, Alicia sent, sent me a thing said, he said he'd do it. And I was like, does that mean he's going to do it? Or does that mean we think he's going to do it? Or does that, you know, like, do we have, is that the final word? Or should I feel like I, until I see a contract with a name on it or something, like I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want to mm -hmm. run around saying Paul Lansky's writing this piece and then um, have it somehow not come to pass. But I, I, I'm beyond thrilled. And I will say that, um, you know, one measure of, I don't know if it's sophistication, but, or, or quality or popularity, however you want to describe people's positive reactions to music. But for me, the interesting thing is, you know, one interesting part is, does the audience respond to a piece? Uh, but when it comes to chamber orchestra piece, another question is, does the orchestra respond to it? And I've had many people come up to me over the yeah, course of the Yeah, a lot of the orchestra days. musicians have come up to me and uh, congratulated me on the piece. A lot of them. Yeah. That, that's very gratifying. And that, yeah. And that, I mean, they're polite people, but that doesn't always happen. Like, we, <laughs> we, we tell the truth mm -hmm. to each other um, when there's when there's a new piece. And this orchestra has a long history of commissioning. I mean, considering we only do about four full orchestra concerts a year that we've commissioned, you know, between chamber pieces and smaller works, I think it's coming up on 60 pieces uh, in, the, in the orchestra's history, which uh, for me is impressive. But. Well, if in a, in a few years time, the orchestra decides to commission another piece from me. I'll say I'll say yes at the drop of a hat. <laughs> it's a wonderful group, and uh, the spirit is good, and the playing is superb. And um, I think a composer would be crazy not to write for them, and crazy not to write for you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>